Dr. Stan Tolgachev. I work here at the Department of Dermatology of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. I'll be discussing my paper, Postoperative Pyderma Gangrenosum, a clinical review of published cases, which will appear in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. Uh, briefly, Pyderma Gangrenosum is a neutrophilic dermatosis that in classing form presents with rapid painful ulceration uh, in the leg or other sites, of, and this may have association with systemic diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, or hematologic dyscrasias. Postoperative pyderma gangrenosum is a form of PG that develops in the sites of prior surgery or even trauma. It has a unique pr uh, property of pathergy, where a lesion of PG develops in the sites of trauma, analogous to the Kebner phenomenon of psoriasis or lichen planus or vitiligo. We reviewed 34 years of published literature on PG and surgery to better characterize uh, postoperative PG. We excluded peristomal pyderma gangrenosum. We found that postoperative pyderma gangrenosum presents as a painful ulceration seven days after surgery and has dehiscence of the wound. It's typically seen in women and usually breast is the most common site. Patients with post-op PG have a less association with systemic diseases than those with classic form of pyderma gangrenosum. If a systemic disease is involved, typically hematologic dyscrasias are the most commonly seen. Unfortunately, due to the confusion uh, with wound infection and necrotizing fasciitis, the lesion is often debrided, which may cause further exacerbation of the entire process. Postoperative pyderma gangrenosum has less association with systemic diseases than that in the classic form and is often misdiagnosed as infection. If a patient presents with a severely painful wound in the postoperative period and has wound dehiscence and is not responding to typical therapy, while we should make sure to rule out infection, postoperative pyderma gangrenosum should be in the differential diagnosis. We frequently get consultations about non-healing wounds after surgery. Often these wounds have been already debrided due to the risk and the scare of necrotizing fasciitis and infection. While it is less common a wound infection, it is something that should be considered due to the fact that management differs drastically from that of infections. Immunomodulatory medications such as corticosteroids are the typical mainstay of therapy and debridement should be avoided in the cases of postoperative pyderma gangrenosum. Recognition of this entity helps prevent significant morbidity and additional surgery. Additionally, if present, recognition of postoperative pyderma gangrenosum uh, may help identify an underlying systemic disease that needs to be further investigated and possibly treated. In order for uh, the clinical team to better recognize this process, I refer you to our figure two to show the classic image of postoperative pyderma gangrenosum and actually also the site that should be biopsied in order to identify this entity. Additionally, table four is something that can suggest uh, postoperative wound dehiscence and the evaluation that should take place. For postoperative pyderma gangrenosum, we actually recently published a study that corroborates our findings. Additionally, the next step would be to educate all members of the patient care team to make sure to better recognize this entity in order to initiate appropriate therapy and avoid potentially morbid uh, worsening process. Lastly, identify the high-risk individuals may lead to early recognition and appropriate treatment and possibly perioperative precautions in cases of postoperative pyderma gangrenosum. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.